So let's get started. Difficult times bring turbulences, but also opportunities. Mr. Amar Shaker and his guests will be sharing some practical tips on how to face those challenges while moving forward to reach new heights in life. Hammer is an inspirational coach with 30 years international experience holding executive MBA from HTC Paris. He has helped a number of customers to go through their self-transformation journeys. His mission is to help people and organizations unleashing full potential to achieve their objectives. Without further introduction, I leave the floor to Mr. Amr Sheikh. Amr. Thank you, Ali. And thank you all for joining. I, you all know that uh, I really wait for this opportunity to meet you and share with you some of the insights around different topics. Uh, today, the topic's name is uh, From the Valley to the Mountain, Tips to Survive Difficult Times. During the presentation and during the Q&A, you will find out more why we selected the topic of today and how it is related to what I went through during the last few months. So just an introduction around the theme. We are going to be talking about life difficulties in general with some concrete uh, examples. <clears throat> I will be... Um, supported during the session by my dear friend, Marco Schmitz. Uh, and the way I wrote it here on the, on the slide, a man who transformed the subject into an art of living. And this is, I know, and I work with, with Marcus since more than 20 years. And we went through diff different uh, situations. Some of them were difficult. And I always uh, admired the way he uh, approached this, uh, this topic in a very typical, practical manner. And again, it is a new chapter of the Inspiring Our Life, as mentioned by Ali. Inspiring Our Life is not just a brand that I created two years ago, but it is a way of living. Uh, and as a reminder, we cannot inspiring, inspire others unless we inspire ourselves. Each one of us have the responsibility to inspire our life in order to inspire others by practice. <clears throat> I will start by a quotation from Dalai Lama. If there is a solution to a problem, there is no need to worry. And if there is no solution to a problem, there is still no need to worry. Again, it is the mindset that I wish that we all have during the session. Again, I always say for those kind of webinars and seminars, it is not what we share is what will make the difference, is how it triggers thoughts, ideas, reactions, actions on your side. This is the value is in, in how you reflect on it and how you react to it. <clears throat> we are not going to be sharing something that you never heard about it before. It is just linking the dots and helping you moving forward in your life. So the agenda of today, we'll, we'll, we'll have question and answers between Marcus and myself. Uh, we, did, we prepared the questions, but we did not prepare the answers. So it will be freshly shared with you. I will discover the answers coming from uh, Marcus and uh, Marcus will be discovering mine. We are going to be talking about who did, did not face difficulties and how we've, we managed it. What is required to face those difficulties? What about the other? people difficulties. We are going to be summarizing the key takeaway or takeaways. And then we are going to have an open interactive session with the audience uh, with question and answers from you. So without further ado, and now I'm going to be welcoming uh, Marcus to join me on stage. Thank you so much, uh, Amor. I'm delighted and, and really honored that I can join you here today in front of this uh, very, very nice audience. And I'm looking forward to our nice discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you very much. So um, the first topic, as we said, it's how we face difficulties. So Marcus, you, and uh, as far as your work scope is, is, is concerned, you spend your day managing crisis, operational crisis, managing problems helping customers, helping your colleagues, helping your managers, managing difficult situations. And I would al I always say that if there are no difficult situations, we will not need Marcus. So we, we have many, many difficult situations in life and or corporate organizations, and this is why we need people like yourself. But while you are doing this, you always keep a good mood, keep good balance. What is your secret? I don't want, I wouldn't call it a secret. It's nothing else that I'm, um, very, how shall I say, um, attentive to um, what's happening around me, 
and what's happening in my own life and that I try not to allow anything that's been coming in negative to influence the rest of my activity and the rest of my life. Um, as you rightfully stated, in operations and also in delivery, we have constant crises, constant issues. But one of the things that I had to learn in, in my early life is life and, and, and fate is not attacking you. It's not a, a, about you. It's about something, um, a situation, an issue that you need to sort out. And that is, the, is, I think, the key to really identify that you are here, every one of us here, to play a role and to, to help sort out problems and not, uh, you are not, we are not the target of any problem there. Um, <clears throat> if you allow me just to, to step a little bit back uh, from, from problem solving and crisis, and one could compare that with um, someone giving you a bad name, someone calling you really bad words in front of you. It's your choice if you're accepting that or not. And um, what helped me, because we always have situations where something like that is happening, and what helps me to I don't want to say ignore it, but to keep it more professional and keep it away from me is just imagine if someone is speaking to you in a language that you don't understand and is giving you these names in this language. He can do that and you don't understand a single thing. So of course, it's not hurting you. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with uh, bad words and also with bad situations. If a bad situation is coming around, I'm trying to solve it, not take it personally, not take it uh, back home and, and so on. And um, if you allow me to take a, a very, very long step back in my younger times, so round about 30, 32 years ago, when I was, I don't want to tell my, my age here, but uh, I was around 20, um, my wife and I, before we even got married, we were facing quite some challenges in our private life. We lost uh, over the time of two years, um, both uh, our, our fathers, my mother, and um, several friends, and interestingly enough, I lost four friends in two years at that time um, through motorbike riding. And that had a huge impact on our lives at these times. But instead of um, being stuck in grieving, um, we helped the families a little bit. We helped my father um, to sustain all of that. And, and we took the action in order to own the proper resolution and not to get drowned in grief. And one of the key um, decisions that we already took in that early years is uh, we are not making long-term plans, meaning that we are trying to live our life as intensive as anyhow possible. Not meaning that we are just ignoring that we are getting older and that we have to take care for kids and having a house and so on and all that, but not doing plans that say, when I'm 65, I will go on vacations and then I will live my life. No, we decided to live our life immediately. And that's what we did throughout our whole life so far. And I dare to say that also helped massively, massively to overcome the pressure that we had from um, crisis in our private life and in our professional life. All of the issues that we have here, when you're on the other side, you have all the people talking always about work-life balance. I dare to say uh, we really professionalized that. We are doing a good work-life balance simply by keeping the bad things a little bit away, but still trying to solve them. And um, I have to say that throughout my whole life, I had several occasions of things happening like that. Was it in my older career when I was uh, with the military or the German Secret Service or the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs, or then finally in the wonderful world of telecommunications where I'm in now, where we are together. In, and uh, I have to say the, one of the most positive things that I had working for this company is to meet you and to work with you there because uh, you are also always bringing such a positive spirit and I think that's the thing that helps us all to survive and to sustain on that one and um, Amrit, to be very honest and, and, and giving back the ball a little bit to you um, a couple of months ago I have to say I was extremely shocked because we were not talking for a couple of weeks and when I, heard, I finally heard about your very, very serious corona infection, um, please, if you don't mind, share with us what that meant for you at that time and what you took out of that. Thank you, Marcus, for the question. And this is um, when I, in the introduction, when I said that we selected the topic because a, a number of people like yourself asked me to talk about it. So um, I will share some of the insights Again, today um, I, uh, it is, I'm looking backward on it, but when I, I went through the exercise and the process, it was tough. 
So like many people, we always looked at the Corona statistics and we looked at uh, uh, what is happening around the world in, our, in the country where we live, our friends and family. And most of the people that we knew about had a light or mild Corona. And when I started uh, the symptoms of the Corona, I thought I will be like the others. But, and this was on the 24th of December, uh, the day when everybody is starting to celebrate Christmas. But very fast, I went downward. And very fast, in a few days, I lost control over all my body functions. And I really felt that I am reaching an end, an end in the sense of not, not the end of the life or all this, but the end that I am not anymore living as a normal human being because I lost control over everything in my body. I had pains everywhere and I was not able to expect and plan mentally what will happen in the next minute. And this lasted for 10 full days. Uh, at that time, I was struggling with the, with, with, the, with the idea of accepting that I am sick. And uh, I was just rejecting the fact that I'm sick. But when I decided to accept that I'm sick, to accept this fate and accept that I will have to deal with it, then everything started to happen positively afterwards. So a neighbor of mine, and he's attending this uh, webinar, and I'm honored to have him in the, with us. He helped me a lot finding the right uh, specialist. And from there on, I had the right treatment. And I went through a couple of months of military medical treatment, military in the sense that I had every minute something to do to survive, because I was in a surviving mode. And when you are in surviving mode, you look at everything that happened in your life in a very different manner. I really looked at big problems that I thought it were big problems and they were smaller at that time. I looked at my health practice and how I was eating, how I was treating myself, how was I was treating others. And I, I really uh, uh, perceived it in a completely different manner. It helped me a lot. It helped me to have friends around me. It helped me to have people who are asking about how the evolution is, is progressing. It, but I have to tell you that basic things, I lost concentration, I, I lost the ability to read, I, I lost the ability to even watch a program in TV for more than 10 minutes. And I had to retrain myself in all of those elements. So while I was uh, uh, getting back my health through medical treatment, I was trying to learn how to do basic things that we do it today and normally in a very, very unconscious manner. All of this have uh, made me realize that as you mentioned, life is very short, things can change from one day to another, and we have to really to appreciate every single moment. It is easy that uh, uh, at the end of the year, every time, every year, or the beginning of the year, we wish each other happy new year, happy health, but we don't think about it. I, I don't recall that I was that sick during all my life until now. So I would really recommend uh, everyone to take the time, to take a moment, to think about someone in your surrounding who was very sick, whether they are still alive or not, and realize what they went through, the process that they went through, and realize that it is a real big blessing not to be sick and to keep your health somehow under control as much and as long as you can. This is the real lessons that I learned by preventing, by increasing your immunity, not only physically, but mentally. One of the main reasons why I was that sick is that my immunity system was weak because I went through lots of uh, challenges last year. So again, this is one of the lessons learned is to maintain the balance, as you mentioned, not only life work balance, but physical mental balance. <clears throat> uh, again, I can speak for hours about those two or three months of tough times, but again, today I'm very uh, grateful uh, to God, to the friends, to the doctors who helped me to be where I am now. Some people consider me younger, <laughs> looking younger than before, but I can tell you that I am simulating it with lots of um, vitamins and others, but the road was tough and I'm very happy to be with you today again in one of those webinars. Thank you for raising the question, Marcus. We are moving now to the second uh, topic where uh, the definition of difficult times. I believe that if you ask people who uh, are going or went through wars, their definition of difficult times is different from people who never experienced wars. Uh, we'll, if you ask people like what the experience that I just mentioned now around the health uh, problems uh, to, to describe difficult times for them, it will be different from others who never had a serious health problem. And again, it doesn't mean that this the, the, the first category have uh, um, harder difficult times compared to the second category or the third category or the fourth category. 
everyone have difficult times in their own context. In your case, Marcus, can you tell us about one or two examples of real difficult times? You already mentioned an example at the beginning of your pitch, but can you share other examples where you had to face something that was difficult to face? Yes, for sure. Let, let me start with, with, with a private one. And, and I have to say that this, that was more or less um, a family issue and a, a real, real tough one as well. And that is uh, um, cancer. I had several cases of cancer in my family. Both my parents um, had colon cancer. My mother even died uh, with colon cancer, but not because the cancer came back, but because a, a doctor um, was 88 um, without any proper analysis uh, gave her radiation and that radiation destroyed the colon. Can you imagine, um, and I was at that time 19 years old, um, what I had to go through and what I had to fight in order to get that guy finally starting his pension. Yeah, I, I was threatening the, um, the hospital where he was working with publicity, with everything, and that was really a tough um, school there. I didn't want to go there to, 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 to sue them or to get any money out of that. I just wanted to stop this guy from practicing as a doctor anymore. That, uh, it was incredible. And that finally led me uh, to, to I think, uh, a lesson in my whole life that I need to stand up for things, no matter what it is. I need to put my position, put my feet on the ground and defend my position to against anyone. Because uh, I tell you, I was in one moment sitting with the director of this hospital in one room. And before I even started to say hello, he told me that um, if I'm going to sue them, that he will use all of the lawyers, all of the uh, commercial power that his hospital has to fight against me. And I was just shocked because I, I wasn't saying what I want to achieve, I, nothing at all. And then I, I told him bluntly that I don't plan to sue him but I want to have this guy being removed from the stuff, no matter what it takes. And even if I need to go to the worst uh, newspaper that we can get here in Germany, the Bild Zeitung, it's a very, very bad one, but a very, very widely read one, and in order to make this a case. And finally he accepted. We were talking then for two hours and um, two weeks later, that guy finally went into pension. And that, that helped me really to understand that we should not be shy. We should take our position. We should take our ground and push forward to that. The second thing, and, and that was also a life lesson, was one of the first larger, real larger projects that I was leading in the telecommunications area. You, you see, before I went uh, um, to work for a company, I was self-employed. I, I studied computer science and was programming, um, doing network uh, consultations and so on. And when I had the first large project in a company, it was uh, the takeover of a, of a German network provider. And I took that so deeply and, and so personally, was personally still so engaged. Um, I still remember very, very good one specific situation where we are sitting in, in a war room. We were just starting the migrations. And at that time we had uh, identifiers called DNA. It was a seven digit number that was identifying every single one of the 8,000 connections that we had to take over. And I just was uh, reading uh, um, some uh, um, uh, report and I just overheard half conscious a discussion between two of my colleagues talking about a specific connection and they were searching for the DNA. And without hesitation, without even thinking about, I gave them the DNA out of my memory. And that moment I said to myself, you must be freaking stupid. Why the heck do you've got 8,000 DNAs in your stupid brain? There should be something more important in your brain. And, and that, in the end, was then also a lesson for me in my life to never, ever, if anyhow possible, get lost into details that I shouldn't care about, care, care about. We've got so many people around us that are helping us, that have their own task, that have their own activity. May it be in the private life or in the professional life. And one of the key lessons that I had in that time was simply trust them. Trust them. You don't need to be in control of all the details. Just trust the people around you. There are just, I don't want to say even a handful. There are just single people that, that mean to give you harm. All the rest is there to live their life positively and to help. And I think that was one of the major things there. And to come back to the um, cancer one, there was a very, very private one as well. And um, I have the door closed, but my wife, 
was also suffering breast cancer a couple of years ago. And it was a very tough time for both of us. But the result afterwards, um, when we managed together to fight against that, is that she started to live her life completely new. And she made a motorbike driving license with the age of 45. And again, what we did is live our life. And uh, I think that's something where I can really invite everyone here on the call and everyone that might listen to us in, in, the, in the recording or so to take such a thing seriously. Don't get drowned into any catastrophe or disaster. There's always a way out and there's always, always something that you can learn positively out of it. And one thing that you said earlier, if you don't mind, uh, um, Amra, when you said when you finally accepted your, your sickness, the corona, it became better. I think that's one of the key points. First, consciousness, so that you really understand what's happening with you surrounding the situation, and then acceptance. Because if we don't accept the situation, the wisdom of the Dalai Lama is not kicking in. If you accept the situation, then you can decide, can I do something against it or about it? Great, I don't need to have to worry. If I can't do anything about it, I also can't, don't need to worry. I just need to see how I can get out of the situation in the end. And um, yeah, I think that helps a lot. Um, but I'm, I was talking now more or less about private life and that's just one example out of my professional life. You, uh, with all of your experience, would you have an advice to me, to the audience on how to translate these private decisions and experiences um, more, I would say, methodologically in our professional life? Uh, I would I would answer your question, but not only for professional life, for personal life as well. Uh, whenever we face difficult times, Marcus, is because we are facing a situation which goes beyond the normal day to day, the normal capacity that we are programmed to apply. Mm -hmm. And usually it is related to a loss of something, either loss of health, loss of um, uh, possession, loss of hope, loss of knowing what to do next. Uh, loss, loss of loved ones. So it is really difficult times. It's about loss of security. We talked about the war and, and, and things like this. So I would say that it is the mindset, as, as mentioned by you and several examples, the mindset. Acceptance is one of it. Uh, not judging others if, they are, if there are others who are part of the difficult situation that you are facing not to judge them, not to judge yourself, not to judge the situation, not to put the blame on someone else, except as I mentioned before, and you highlighted a minute ago, and, and go through the process. And here I will give two examples. An example of um, someone who managed me, he was my manager a few years back, I mean, long time ago, 20 years ago, and he was a French Lebanese guy. You and must have he told me- at the time. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and he was he was he gave me very good advice because as I said he was French Lebanese. He said that he went through war. He he was young during the Lebanese war, and he said that uh, during a war time, um, uh, hope is very rare. Hope is very difficult to find, and it is very difficult times to go through. But he said that uh, uh, he needed to keep uh, his mental balance, his uh, skills his learning, his education, um, his savings up to date because he was getting ready when the war will be finished and when opportunities will come. And he gave me this advice by saying, always be ready for the after the difficult time. Because if you get yourself down during difficult time, when it is over and when the train will pass, you will miss it. So this was a very good advice that I want to share it with the audience today. A second one is that a friend of mine who was playing tennis when he was young, he had work problems, health problems, family problems, all type of problems. And he called me and he said, Amr, I don't know where to start from. And I said, when was the last time that you bought a, a, a recent uh, tennis racket or an update, up to date tennis racket? And he said, long time ago, I stopped playing since I was sick and, and I started to work and having a family. And I said, so uh, break the problems that you have into small pieces and start by buying a new tennis racket something, a, a tennis racket that you like, and you project in it your next tournaments that you're going to play. So he started by doing that. He picked a, a, a good tennis racket. He ordered it, he received it, and he started practicing again. And I can tell you this was a few years back. And today he's taking a flight. He's 48 years old now, and he's taking a flight 
to go to play for the World Cup of Tennis and the category of age of where he fits. Or I believe it is the range of 49 to 60, something like this. So just to tell you that he's classified in this age and he's playing tennis in parallel to his work. He's in a good health he is a good balance. And it started by buying a tennis racket that he wanted after years of not practicing and after years of not part of what he loves to do. So again, when you are in a difficult situation, project for the future, plan for the future, prepare for the after difficult times through simple actions, through simple tips uh, that you can control, that you can change, and then things will move on afterwards. So now we are going to the third theme, which is others. We talked about ourselves. I give an example about other, but, but now we are going to talk about others, but real difficult situations where we admired those others where, he, where they went. And we felt, and this is the question that I want to ask you, Marcus, if you can give us an example about someone in, around you, whether a family, friend, or even a known character, where you feel, when you felt that he did something or she did something that you could never have been able to do it, when they face their difficult times. Can you share an example with us in a couple of minutes? That's a tough one. That's indeed a, a, a very, very tough one. Um, I think one of the key uh, guys that really influenced me in this way um, is in fact, and, and we never talked about that before, um, the general manager of a, a company that I worked uh, for before. Um, I joined finally Equant Orange at the moment. And this guy had a motto and uh, he, he told me one day that uh, his motto is either you are part of the problem or you are there to solve the problem. And that's something that he did in his whole life. Um, it was a very small company and uh, the company was uh, completely owned by a political um, environment, uh, the German Liberal Party at that time. And you can imagine that the influences from outside were extremely political, extremely political. And he was uh, under fire most of the three years that I was working there. And this guy still managed every single day. So it was not just one instance, but it was really throughout the three years to simply, I don't want to say ignore all of the pressure and all of the influence coming from outside, but to deflect it. He was really, I don't want to say play with all the different people that are trying to get rid of him, but he was nice, professional, taking care about every single issue that arose and simply didn't leave any room for anyone to mostly complain about him or, or really find the reasoning for him to get out of there. And there were many reasons to be very honest, but the way he was really balancing all of that. And by the way, he had also a very, very active private life. He was an uh, um, enthusiastic golf player at that time and he was playing the golf and that for a very small company and uh, he still had his fingers everywhere. And I was really at that time, because I was still quite a young guy, impressed on how he was taken on that. And the other person that I really was really, really impressed on, and that was the example that I gave you earlier, is my wife. Um, the way she really managed to get out of this deep, deep, deep valley of having a diagnosis of breast cancer and, and fighting against that, um, it was just impressive. And I, to be very, very honest, if I would have something similar, I'm not sure if I could be as positive as she. Um, and let me tell you a secret. Uh, although my wife and I are German, and I know that the prejudice against Germans is we don't have any humor. We've got lots of them, lots of them. And that helps so massively. Sometimes in the darkest situations, um, a stupid joke can perform miracles very often. Thank you. Amor, I know that with all of the experience that you have, and by the way, the example that you just gave uh, with your tennis playing friend, I think you, you honored your, your, the name of, of your um, company here. You inspired him massively, but uh, <laughs> tell us the secret. Who inspired you most? I mean, many people inspired me, mm -hmm. but there, was, uh, I mean, um, there are two uh, uh, examples that I want to share. One is a friend of mine, who is very um, creative and very generous in his way of working and living. And uh, we were disconnected for a long time. And recently we were reconnected 
again, through social media. So I always say that social media is not always negative because we can reconnect to each other through this uh, kind of uh, applications and social media. And he, men he mentioned to me that uh, he was, um, he faced uh, a, a real challenge in his life because he was putting all his savings in some bank institutes. And unfortunately they, due to corruption or others, he lost those kind of savings, but this didn't stop him. He started a new life looking at what he loved to do. And now he's healing people through food, cool. only through food, through uh, 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 selecting what they need to eat, how they eat, how they live, no medicines, nothing except food therapy and accompanying those people. So he started a new life, a new career, a new balance of life, a new way of living, helping others through his generosity. He's highly creative, highly creative to to in everything he does. And he is putting this kind of loss of material behind his back and he's moving forward and he's starting a new life. And this, I, I have a great admiration because I'm not sure if I'm able to do, to, to have this kind of mindset in sh such short time be between the crisis and the new life that he started. So this is an example. And I would like uh, uh, to uh, invite everyone to look at two one book and one film. Maybe you already know it, but just for the record, the, the film is uh, La Vie Belle, The Beautiful Life from um, Roberto Bellini. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this film, for the ones who know it and for the ones who do not know it, is about the, the Nazi camps and the, 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 the treatment in, in, by, in the Nazi camps. And there was a father and his son, and he convinced the son that it was a game. It was just a game. And they were scoring points by hiding from the soldiers or by escaping this or by making a joke, as you mentioned, the power of jokes, Marcus. And, 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 and so I believe that this film gives lots of inspiration, lots of insights. The second one is a recent book that a friend of mine recommended uh, to me and I'm recommending to everyone is called 4,000 Weeks. 4,000 Weeks uh, by, Robert, uh, by uh, Robert Berkman, if I'm not mistaken, is, is about the fact that if averagely you live 78 years, you will, the number of weeks that you will live is around 4,000 weeks, not more, not less. And when I ask my wife, when I ask my friends, how many weeks do you think we are living? They said, ah, we don't know. First they tell me, don't ask us silly questions. And then they answered, they said, maybe 50,000, maybe 100,000, maybe 10,000. And it is only 4,000, even if you live 78 years old. So no matter how old you are, you know that the number of weeks that you have left to live is either half of the 4,000 or third of the 4,000 or quarter of the 4,000 or more. I hope that everybody will live 100 years. But again, we are talking about average. So it is all about choice. It's all about how, what you do with your time in, on Earth and which choices. If you are doing that, you will not be able to do other things. If you are spending your weekend doing this sport activity, you will not be able to do other things. You have to select how you spend your time. You need to select the best way to get the satisfaction from life, but also to help others in life. I really recommend 4,000 week. I'm not sure if I got the name of the, right, the, 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 the author right, but it is, it is the concept about the 4,000 weeks that I, want, I invite everyone to think about it. We have limited time on earth and let's make the best out of it by making the right choice. And if you make the right choice, you, time will fly. You will feel in, in harmony with what you are doing in life and people will be inspired by you. And again, remember the theme of my small company, inspiring our life, inspire yourself. You, by this, by doing that, you will inspire others. And this is the main message around this point. So now we are coming to the takeaways. And Marcus, I will give you the honor to share uh, the, 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 the first with the, with the audience, what three tips you wish to uh, uh, leave them with. I think the first one is um, unfortunately not the simplest one. And this is stay positive. No matter what's happening, stay positive. Um, <laughs> I know the depression can hit hard, a burnout can hit hard, but the, the most important thing that you need to keep in mind is if it's raining outside, it's not raining because of you. It's nothing that not that the world is against you. No matter what it is, 
stay positive and as you rightfully stated and that's the second point be prepared for the future it always the sun will always shine again no matter in what situation you are in there it will get better and the third one and that's something that i said earlier and this is consciousness be very very conscious about yourself your environment and what's happening around you and then you will see that most of the things that are happening around you are indeed positive but we tend to to simply ignore the positive things and concentrate on the negative things and that's wrong thank you very much as 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 far as i'm concerned i will take the honor now to share with the with the audience what uh, the the one takeaway that i would like them to 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 keep is about difficulties are what we make out of it difficulties are are not just they don't stand as difficulties the difficulties are negative if we make a negative thing out of it they are positive if we transform them into a lesson into a new page that we can start in our life into an inspiration uh, uh, trigger for something else if we can inspire ourselves if you can inspire others difficulties are means are opportunities and not uh, uh, just obstacles this is just the message that i would like to leave everybody with Having said this, today I discovered that it is the Star Wars Day. It is May the 4th, so I found this um, on the internet. May the 4th be with you. And again, it is, it is one of those kind of playing with words, just to put a smile on your face. And now I believe that it is the time for question and answers. And I give the floor back to my friend Ali, who will be moderating this, uh, this uh, part of the, uh, the webinar. Thank you, Amr. Thank you, Marcus. It's good to have you back. So we have the first question from the audience coming from uh, Tarek. Uh, what about the fear to get into difficult times in a way that one cannot only enjoy good life already in hand? Thank you. Marcus, please. Uh, I think if you, if you let your, your life rule um, uh, by, by fears, what, might ba what bad things might happen, um, I don't want to say you lost already, but you are not concentrating on what's happening now. And that's what I meant with my very first introduction, that the lesson that we learned is you have to live your life now. Be prepared for catastrophes, don't get me wrong. You need to have some insurances and you need to be prepared for when you are older. But don't every single day um, expect that something bad will happen. Uh, I have to tell you, my father was one of these persons who was always expecting the worst things to happen. And he did not enjoy life. He simply didn't. So it might be too easy to say, but keep a smile and live. I will, thank you, Marcus. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, Tariq, I will just remind you about the quotation from the Dalai Lama. Uh, if there is, uh, if a problem has a solution, there is no need to worry about. And if it doesn't have a solution, there is no need to worry about. But I would say that before, and as Marcus said, before the problem happens, let's not to worry about. But when it happens, again, you will, we, we need to look at it and we might be afraid from it. I was afraid from the COVID situation. I was afraid to lose my life. I was afraid for my, my family about what will happen and so forth. Uh, but when I accepted the disease, when I accepted the difficult situation, it became part of me. I embrace it. And through this embracing, you start considering the difficulty as, as a way to move to the next step. So you not fear it you will just use it. You will be like, like a teeming with the difficulty. Again, it is all easy to say, but when we go through the difficult times, sometimes it's very difficult. But again, as Marcus said, let's, let's not try to be frozen by the fear of problems that did not happen. Let's anticipate as much as we can. And when it happens, let's face it by accepting first and then break it into small pieces and then moving on. Thank you, guys. Uh, our next question comes from Antonio Lima. Thank you for sharing these important visions. One of the most important requisitions to dig yourself out of a problem is to believe. To believe the solution has an end or solution. If you believe, you calm yourself and start to think. At these moments of despair and disbelief, it's critical to master the strength to believe. How do you think we can help others to believe? In a summary, how to help others? 
Wow. Marcus, you'd like to give first or I go first? You go first, please. I need to think another second or so. Okay. Uh, very deep question, as the first question from Tarek as well. Um, first, you need, when you want to help someone, you need to be sincere. You need to give him the advice or give her the advice of what you will apply. Whenever I face problems myself, I start by saying, if someone else is facing this problem, what kind of advice I will give him or give her, and I will start applying it for myself. So having said this, when you give advices to others, be very sincere that this is the best that you can. Second element, put yourself in his shoes. Again, believe that you are in his shoes and don't put yourself as a lesson giver. Just put yourself at the same level with the same kind of mindset and try to see how you can accompany him or her through this. The third element about believing that if we have always think negatively about life, that there are corruption, politicians are all corrupted, uh, there is no evolution, there is no hope for the future for our children, uh, economy will collapse, politics, uh, there will be a third war, uh, world world war, and, 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 and we will not be able to inspire others. We'll not believe, we'll not be able to help others because we don't believe ourselves in the future. So first let's get things right, that life is as it is, uh, our ancestors went through wars and they survived and hence they give us give uh, birth to their uh, to their children who give us birth so it is only a matter of time when you are facing a difficult time to move to the next step marcus now it is time for you to give us i can perfectly advice. underline what you just said and i think one of the key sentences that you said is don't tell anyone else how they need to sort out the problems that they are facing the only thing that we should give is the advice based on our own experience. So if there was a similar situation or just quite a similar situation that we went through, it's always good to, to share the experience on how we dealt with that. Even if we didn't manage to sort the problem, just also give the negative experience to help others to prevent to do the same issues there. And the second thing is, if we are able to do that, and I think that's more easier in the private life than in the professional life, is to give the people back self-esteem and positivity. And um, if, if you don't mind, just a short side excursion. Um, my wife is working as a nurse in a psychological uh, rehab hospital. And what she's doing there regularly is doing uh, therapy sessions with uh, our three dogs. We've got three dogs that are trained uh, in, in, in certain therapy, in the dog therapy with the people. And the, most of the patients there are, are depression patients. And one of the key things that she's training with them is there's a small game where they need to say something positive about themselves. And that's the toughest, the, the toughest thing that you can imagine for someone who's suffering depression. And the way to, to enable them is they are only allowed to give uh, some sweets to the dog when they said something positive about themselves. And that's the motivator. That's the motivator. And I think that's something if you take that as an example, on you try to motivate other people, try a little bit of discourse and try to get a little bit around the problem and try to motivate to think positively about themselves. Thank you, sir. Back to you, Ali. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have a quick comment coming from uh, Michelle Lode. Mm -hmm. I am very happy to be here. Nice to meet you all. Just Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. And now the next question is coming from Shirley Colley. What part do you feel forgiveness plays of ourselves and of others in moving through difficult times? Thank you. Marcus? A very big one. A very, very big one because no one of us is perfect. Every one of us has failed situations, has failed people, has failed expectations of ourselves or of others. But hey, we are not perfect. So that's for me a key point that you need to forgive yourself so that the next time something similar happening or something other, something completely different is happening, that you are not falling into the trap and thinking about yourself. Damn it. Last week I was not able to solve the problem, so I will never be able to solve the problem now. You need to first forgive yourself and then again come back to the positive attitude that you can solve every problem, single-handed or with help. Um, just to complement forgiveness, I can give you an example about the COVID situation that I went through. I was medically badly treated at the beginning. 
I was given the wrong treatment, the wrong approach, and I was about to, to lose my life due to this bad treatment. And I was angry at the beginning. And, and some friends said, you need to, you should sue the doctors who treated you at the beginning. But I really felt that the, the first and the most important healing step for me was to forgive them, to accept that maybe they didn't do it because COVID is new, still new. Everyone is learning about it. So they did maybe their best. They give me their best treatment. It didn't work. And when I accepted this, when somehow, and again, the word forgiveness or the word forgiveness is as if you are putting ourselves above the others. It is not that I was above them, but I accepted, I forgave that there was some errors happening to me. Then the healing process started and I found the right doctors and I found the right process and I was able to, pro to progress. So Shirley, I thank you very much for the question. Again, it is forgiveness is one of the best first steps to face a difficult situation. Thank you. This one is coming from Tom Tardivel. Uh, Marcus talks about the need to live the present moment, but at the same time, Armand explains the importance to project ourselves into a beautiful future. The point is that when I am projecting my beautiful future and that I'm trying to live the present moment at the same time, I tend to be lost in where I should be. I am struggling to live in the moment present because I want to be in this beautiful future, but at the same time, I struggle to project this beautiful future because I know I should focus on the present moment. How to better deal with this duality? Thank you, Tom. I am delighted to get this question from you, especially that I saw you growing step-by-step step over the last 20 years, my friend. So I'm really honored to have this question from you. Tom, it is uh, exactly the, the, the trick of how to live a happy life and how to have a successful life, is that while you are living your, your, your present moment fully, you need to project and prepare for the future. You cannot live the, the I mean, when you live the present moment without pre preparing the future, you are doing part of the job, part of the work. You need to live the present moment while at the same time preparing for the future. And it's like pre cooking food for tonight. And at the same time, you are preparing for what you are going to eat for tomorrow. The two goes together. What if you are studying by fully uh, 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 being present in your studies today and your classes of today, you are projecting how those classes and how those kind of study will help you having the job of your dreams in the future. The two are linked together. If you are only living in the future and not living the, the present, you are, you are not living. You are just a, a, an object. If you are only living in the press and present and not preparing for the future, there is a time where you will be out of means, tools, ideas, skills, uh, to, to live your future life. You need to have the two while learning from the past. So the, th the three gets together. But again, it, 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 as you say in the question, it is not easy job and it, it comes with practice. Marcus, how did you apply this formula? Um, exactly the way that you just mentioned there. But I, I think Tom, you, you put the, the finger into a wound of our society at the moment, at least the Western society, because we've got a trend, at least that I see, of constant optimization. So uh, I think that there's a, there, there's a thinking in many of the people that it's good, but it could be better. So everyone is looking really on how it can be better and not concentrating on how good it is already. And um, if I take the example that uh, um, Amre told us earlier about his friend um, uh, who really started to buy a new tennis record, that's the today. And that's also the plan for the short term future. The short term future is, he wanted to buy the record because um, it gives him some uh, yeah, fun, fun. He has fun with it. He loves to have a new record. I dare to say when he bought the new record, he did not make a plan that in three years time, I want to win the world, the world championship there in the, where he is now. So he took the first step as his plan to look into the future, but didn't do the large, large plan for the wide, wide future ahead. I think concentrating on what you have today should not prevent you from thinking about how can it be a little bit better, just a little bit better tomorrow? 
don't plan ahead for five years or 10 years time, but do the small steps. Because then the time is so near of today and the future that you can enjoy both. Thank you, Marcus. Ali? Thank you. Uh, our next question is coming from Leonardo Balta. Is that possible? And if so, how can we help others going through difficult situations where yourself has not been before? Thank you, Marcus. Would you like to go I, first? I think what we can do is nothing else than to be, be there as a friend, be there as a colleague, be there as a manager, and don't push people towards the solution. Don't push them. Just be there, be ready to help, and make very, very clear that no matter what decision someone is taking, the, the harder it is, we are here to give advice, we are here to help emotionally, mentally, with experience or, or whatsoever. And um, as a manager, I can tell you, that I had several situations in my life where I had project managers who were working for me who were really standing in front of a wall and had a huge problem. And I told them bluntly, use me as a resource. If you have activities that you can't cope with at the moment, just assign them to me and I make clear that I'm doing these activities. So forget about any hierarchy or so, but be there to help. And um, I think this leveling the people around you in the same level is already a huge help so that everyone is feeling that they are not alone. Um, my experience is when you are st sitting in front of a crisis and you are feeling alone, you lost already. Thank you. Bon dia, Leandro. And thank you for the question. Uh, so if I uh, just to compliment Marcus answer here, I understood well, you are asking if we are not, we did not go through the same experience or the same problem that the person who is seeking help is going through, how can we help him? And I would say that, uh, um, we have to be frank. If we never went through this situation, we can. We just need to be very honest by saying, I did not go through the same situation before that you are going through, but there are other similar situations, closer situations that I can advise you on. And then we can think together. Sometimes when I'm coaching, when I am helping friends or family or coaching professionally, I always say, let's think together. Let's put all the elements together. There is no recipe. We are not lessons giver. Even in this webinar, we are not lessons giver. We are just sharing experience. Some of the experiences that we can share, that you can share with others, that others can share with you are matching what you are going through or what they are going through. But sometimes they're not 100% matching, but we can think together. We can mm -hmm. put all the elements and we see how the, 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 we can use different experiences to go through this new one. <clears throat> this is very important that we are humble to say what we know, what we don't know, we give advices, but with risk management as well, we are not going to give advices and then throw people under the bus. It is very important to take into the consideration all those elements with honesty and sincerity. I always keep saying, whenever we are helping someone professionally or personally, as a manager, as a colleague, as a coach, as a father, as a brother, as a son, always think sincerely, always share the best advice that you can have at this moment that you will apply yourself <clears throat> before you give it to him or to her. And if I might add to that one, I'm being very, very selfish there as well. In being honest and being um, not pushy there, you are contributing to a future success of that person that you are trying to help. And you are also gaining positive experience out of that. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ali? Thank you, guys. Uh, no further questions so far. We still have a few more minutes if you want to talk about, let's say, following on our social media, Amr. Well, okay, now first I will, I will just uh, let Marcus uh, share with the audience how he went through this experience, the preparation and the session today, uh, mm -hmm. and any last words that he wished to share, and then I will conclude. Thank you so much, Amr. To be very honest, I, I fully enjoyed this experience. I, I was uh, um, a guest in, in many of your other sessions already, and having the, the um, honor here to, to speak with you and to have this discussion in front of the audience, it, it's really, uh, I, I, I experienced as a nice talk amongst friends. The only thing that's missing is a beer in front of me, where we could have <laughs> some more <laughs> on that one. No, but... I think um, exchanging our life experience uh, so in a one-on-one -on -one with some guests that are listening to us that and giving hints and giving ideas and further on, it's, it's a great forum, much, much better than just a, a face to the front a presentation and this is how you should live your life. That's never working. What we are doing here uh, is enjoyable. 
and uh, you know me I, I love to have a good laugh and this is a great opportunity here to have that in front of so many friends thank you so much for that thank you very much uh, before i give my last words you reminded me about uh, of the story about the beer a uh, uh, long time ago i i'm originally from egypt as many of you know and i was uh, working in a company where we had we are representing a german company german technical company intervening in the in their airplanes so we are at the Cairo airport and uh, we had a very, very difficult um, technical problem that they needed to solve. And I was accompanying them as a young engineer. And at five o'clock, they stopped working and they said, maybe we'll have to spend a few more hours, but we need some beers. This is beer time and we, have, we need some beers. So of course we couldn't bring the beers inside the, the tarmac and the plane. We had to take them out of the airport, have a break, have some beers and go back and continue until midnight. So yeah, this reminded me about, about the joke that you just put here, Marcus. Again, I enjoyed as, as always, and as I say, sharing those insights, sharing this kind of information is not about lessons giving, but it is just emptying my pockets and your pockets, Marcus, and everybody's pockets through the questions together in a community and to learn together, to grow together, to inspire ourselves and to inspire others. So I hope sincerely from the bottom of my heart, hope that this session have helped uh, all the attendees to trigger some of their ideas, some of their next actions, some of their thoughts, some of their lessons learned today. And hopefully that we can meet again in a few months. Last time we had the session in October, I give you an appointment in January or February, but unfortunately due to the COVID, we had to move it to May. I hope the next time will be in September after the summer holiday. Uh, I invite everyone to, um, as mentioned by Ali at the beginning of the session, if you wish, to follow Inspiring Our Life on Instagram. I publish there at least one post every week to hopefully inspire others on new ideas or old ideas and, and, and refresh some of the known concepts or new concepts. Uh, and you will also find on Inspiring Our Life on YouTube, the recording of this session and all the previous sessions and the future ones. So please remember Inspiring Our Life and give it uh, a help to by following it up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcus, for your time. Thank you, Ali, for the wonderful moderation as always. And I wish everybody a great evening and until next time we meet each other. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you.